Hi, this is Elaine Burke from Silicon Republic and this is day three at the BT Young Scientists and Technology Exhibition. So on my device, uh, if the farmer forgets to put on the handbrake when getting off the tractor, this device then automatically engages the handbrake. So it's operated through a weight sensor in the seat and when the tractor is put into neutral it then applies the handbrake. So it's put into neutral and the weight comes off the seat, it then pushes up the handbrake. My project is LiPi. It's a new form of wireless communication that uses visible lights to transmit data across open space optics. And how does that work? It, uh, it, it's comprised of a transmitter circuit and a receiver circuit. The transmitter circuit is hardwired into the internet and it uh, takes the data from the internet and uh, uses PPPD, which is point-to-point -point protocol, to send the data serial ports on the Raspberry Pi. And it is then sent into my transmitter circuit, which uh, converts the bits into a, a signal that can turn on and off the light. The receiver circuit is comprised of a photodiode that picks up the light signals, converts them into electrical data, which is in an analog signal. I then use two transistors to convert the analog signal into a digital signal, and then it is passed into the Raspberry Pi for processing, and then into my MacBook to facilitate internet access. The title of our project is a statistical analysis of the short-term side effects of the HPV vaccination. So this is the vaccination which prevents cervical cancer and um, it is offered to first year students in our school and schools across the country. Um, so we've chosen this topic, we've chosen um, this topic as it, it's very controversial, I'm sure you've already known, um, in the media and in schools across the country and because the uptake of the vaccination has diminished in recent years. So um, our fifth years now, um, they have 96% of them received the vaccine, whereas the first years now, 51% of them have received the vaccine, so it's really gone down the past few years. So um, when uh, parents look to the media when deciding whether or not to vaccinate their daughters, and there's a lot of controversy in the media, so if um, the media is going to be used in the context of decision making, the information really needs to be accurate and well balanced regarding the risks and the benefits. We handed a survey to the doctors and 100% of them were for the distribution of the vaccine and had never witnessed any patients having an adverse reaction, so that was of interest to us. My project is driven by gender and investigation into subject choice in first year. And what did you find out? I found that the TASTE programme, which is where you try all the subjects before you pick them, really helps students to pick the subjects they want and evens out gender bias in particular subjects. So our project is about designing a water purification system for developing countries. So we started out researching different methods already in use and which ones we wanted to incorporate into our project. So the first one we did was a sand gravel filter, which you didn't do. Yeah, so at the top we were supposed to get the larger particles and as we go down the smaller ones and then the water was completely clear but the water still has bacteria and heavy metal ions that can harm you so we use cysteine which is an amino acid which acts as a magnet for the heavy metal ions so we sanded down some plastic bottle pieces and covered them in a cysteine solution so when the water went through the heavy metal ions would stick to the plastic there were still microorganisms in the water which could cause disease in the gut such as cholera or dysentery so we used UV in the sunlight, so the idea would be that we made a tube just go around a plastic bottle and we used UV beads that absorb and change colour when we're in contact with UV so that the water would be exposed to UV and the microorganisms would be killed and the water is completely clear and ready for consumption. I think we've succeeded in doing a system that would be beneficial for people in developing countries. I mean it's important to use science to help people not just in first world countries but in third world countries as well. Enjoy watching this video? Click here for all the latest news on SiliconRepublic.com or follow us on social media.